the number of different DNA vectors, vector functions and applications has increased substantially since Stanley Cohen constructed PSC101. Plasmids are still the most commonly used cloning vectors because it is relatively easy to manipulate and isolate plasmids from bacterial cells. One of the first widely used plasmid vectors called PBR322 was designed to include genes for ampicillin and tetracycline resistance and several useful restriction sites. However, plasmid cloning vectors have been engineered over the years to incorporate a number of other important features that have made PBR322 obsolete. But as it goes, we will still understand about PBR322 a little later on. So, what are the practical features of a good DNA cloning vector? Well, for starters, you will want the plasmid to replicate once it is inside the host cell. How do we ensure this? There is a basic sequence that the plasmid should contain, the replicon. The replicon comprises the origin of replication or ori and all its control elements. The ori is a sequence from where replication starts and any piece of DNA where linked to this sequence can be made to replicate within the host cell. So, this sequence is responsible for controlling the copy number of the linked DNA. What is copy number? Simply put, the number of plasmids in a cell is called its copy number. The normal copy number of plasmids in most bacterial cells is small, usually less than 12 plasmids per cell. However, many of the most desirable cloning plasmids are known as high copy number plasmids because they replicate repeatedly to create hundreds or thousands of plasmid copies per cell. So, if one wants to recover many copies of the target DNA, it should be cloned in a vector whose ori supports a high copy number. In addition to ori, the vector requires a selectable marker, which helps in identifying and eliminating cells that are not transformed and selectively permitting the growth of cells that are transformed. Normally, the genes encoding resistance to antibiotics such as ampicillin, chloramphenicol, tetracycline or canamycin etc. are themselves considered useful selectable markers for E. coli. Normally, E. coli cells do not carry resistance against any of these antibiotics. Next, a plasmid needs to have a cloning site. What is a cloning site? It is a place where the gene of interest will go and sit. For this to happen, first, the circular plasmid has to be made linear using a restriction endonuclease. Like already discussed, endonucleases have specific DNA sequences that they can read. So, these DNA sequences need to be present on a good vector. In fact, a good vector needs to have very few, preferably single recognition sites for commonly used restriction enzymes. In the presence of more than one restriction site for the same enzyme, within the vector will generate several fragments, which will complicate gene cloning. And finally would be size. The cloning vector should have low molecular weight so that they can be easily separated from chromosomal DNA of the host bacteria.